Hey Racer fans, it's our annual Christmas gift video and we're going to get right to it. If you've been a race fan for the last, I don't know, six decades, five decades, 30, whatever it is, then I don't have to introduce you to Pete Lyons. He's the uh, foremost authority on Formula 1 and Can-Am in North America. His books, his pictures, his calendars are legendary. And his latest project is a book called Shadow. The Magnificent Machines of a Man of Mystery. Don Nichols is the guy that came up with Shadow. And it was, this, this was what was so great about the 70s, and that's why this book is so cool. Any idea was acceptable. So you had Trevor Harris and you had Tony Southgate, two great designers, and Don Nichols who had a nice budget, and they went after Can-Am, then they went after Formula One. And they were successful in both, winning races in each series. And they had some of the best drivers. They had Peter Revson, and George Fulmer. Tom Price, uh, Graham Hill, Alan Jones. Alan Jones won his very first Formula One race for Don Nichols' shadow long before he became world champion with Williams. So it's just, what's great about this book is it just shows you, the pictures are phenomenal. Our buddy Dan Boyd's got a bunch of good pictures in here, but it's just, it's all the things, there's our boy right there, Don Nichols, and he wasn't a race brat. He didn't grow up in a racing family. Matter of fact, uh, he was a paratrooper at D-Day. And this kind of just, it just shows you sometimes racing has an effect on somebody that has no interest in it when they're growing up. And he just jumped into it with both feet. Uh, I think he went through all his money uh, eventually. But he had a he had a flair for the dramatic. His cars were black. The UOP shadows were the some of the coolest cars you've ever seen. And uh, George Fulmer and Jackie Oliver was another guy that, that won, he won Can-Am races for him. And George Fulmer, I think he finished sixth in his very first Formula One race for, for, for Don Nichols and then got a podium not long after that. So uh, the whole thing about Don Nichols' deal and, and Shadow was is nothing seemed out of reach. I mean, it, it was a, a new car necessary every year. They went after it. And I think that was what was cool about the 70s. And, and to try and compete in Can-Am back in the days when McLaren dominated, were pretty amazing, and then he just starts this a startup team in Formula One, and suddenly he's right near the front. So I think if you enjoy racing, and especially open wheel racing, and guys with ideas and what it was like in the '70s, then you only get Shadow because it's a uh, it's a hell of a book. And you go to PeteLyons.com, and that's how you get it. And I think old Pete sends it to you. That that's that's the only way we know right now to get it. Okay, that's one down. Next book we're going to show you is my old buddy John Orvin. Before he became a, a an IndyCar writer, he was a PR man for PacWest Racing back in the 90s. And, and PacWest was this great team that Bruce uh, McCaw started. And Bruce had always been a race fan and a collector of cars. And he, he wanted to get involved. Well, he jumped in with both feet because PacWest was first class all the way. And what's cool about... Oreo's book, Time Flies, The History of PacWest Racing, is it really is an honest look at how you get started in racing, the pitfalls there are, the mistakes there are, the backstabbing there is, the politics that goes on, uh, how you get screwed by manufacturers sometimes, and how things just don't work out even though you have really talented people. And uh, I don't know, Johnny did a really good job of keeping the thing balanced. I mean, everybody got their, everybody got to say what was on their mind in this thing and I, you know he dedicated it to the late John Anderson who was the team manager at Pac West and a great guy but uh, as you'll notice here on the cover Scott Dixon his very first victory came with Pac West and you know I, I think that the Pac West story was if they had been with the right engine manufacturer God knows they'd have still, they might have still been going because I think Bruce would have been I, I think he would, have, he would have stayed with it but I think the way he was kind of jacked around uh, it, it tells you in this book, I, he lost interest, and I think that had a lot to do with it. And every time we see him at a racetrack, we're always like, Bruce, come back, we need Pac West. But it was a hell of a run that they had with Mo Guzelman and Mark Lundell and, 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 just, and just the way that they, they kind of pulled together and suddenly came out of nowhere, and they were nowhere, and then suddenly they were right in the front at a lot of races. And, um, you know, eventually, uh, engines, tires take over and chassis sometimes you make the wrong calls but I, I think that this is just a really good inside look at how you go racing and what and what can happen to you and even with all the good people they had 
and uh, you know you got to have some luck, and you just got to have you got to have the right right equipment, or, or it's not going to work. So that's how you can get this. You can get this at Coastal181.com. You can get it at JohnOrovitz.com. Look at my crypt notes. You can also get it at documentarymedia.com. So that's documentarymedia.com, johnorvitz.com, coastal181.com. That's how you can get Time Flies, The History of Pack West Racing. God, these books are heavy. All right. Our old buddy Gordon Kirby, speaking of heavy books, put together, sat down with Chris Pook, and they put together The History of the Long Beach Grand Prix. And you want to talk about one of the great stories in racing over the last 50 years is the fact that this guy that was a travel agent that nobody knew cold called Dan Gurney and said hey how about a race like Monaco through the streets and I need your help Gurney sells it to the the city of Long Beach and now we have the greatest street race in North America and again what's really cool about this is the inside look at all the politics and all the people that had to be greased and all the people that you, all the hoops you had to jump through. I mean, you got to remember that, you know, it was in, in the mid 70s, nobody really thought about street racing in, in, in IndyCar for sure. And Formula One, come on, we're not going to have a Formula One race through the streets at Long Beach, but, you know, Bernie took a flyer on him, Bernie Eccleston did. And then when things got too expensive, Chris didn't hesitate to dump Formula One for cart, and that was the one of the best things that ever happened to cart but this whole thing just shows you how the the layers of of work that it took to get this thing pulled off and and the merchants that helped in long beach and how the how the how the city went from just this really scungy kind of place that nobody wanted to go to to this beautiful downtown and it's the one race that we can point to in my lifetime where a race changed the entire format and the well not not the format the, the race changed the face of a city it, it, it turned Long Beach into a nice place to go beautiful hotels and restaurants and if you see the pictures from 1975 to like 1995 or 2005 and you see the progress if you've been there you know what I'm talking about so this is Chris Pook the history of the Long Beach Grand Prix Racemaker Press and our buddy Joe Freeman racemakerpress.com is where you get this book and uh, it's again it's, it's heavy reading, because it's heavy, but it's really good, because if you care about IndyCar and Long Beach and, and the history, it's, it's a hell of a book. An easier book to grab a hold of and read is probably John Smale's Speed Kings. John comes from down under, so he decided, he spent a couple years researching this and going all over the country and talking to all the 17 different New Zealanders and Australians, I think, have tried to run the Indy 500. Uh, obviously, I don't think he got to talk to Jack Brabham before he passed away, but I think he talked to his kids. And it's great because not only did Will Power and Scott Dixon end up winning the race, but it talks about, you know, think about Brabham. He changed the face of how IndyCar racing was when he went, when he brought his rear engine Brabham here in 1961. Then you've got, you know, you've got Ryan Briscoe and you've got Kevin Bartlett and you've got uh, just different guy. Kevin Bartlett never made it, but he was a guy that, that was a good driver from Australia and tried. And then Vern Chupan, to me, was one of the guys. Dan Gurney liked him and put him in his Formula 5000 car and his Indy car. And Vern was another guy that came close to winning the Indy 500. He finished third one year. But just a pleasant, really pleasant guy. So what John did is he did a good job of just packing all this history into what it meant to these guys to win the Indy 500, even though they're so far away from Indianapolis and didn't grow up around it. And uh, you get this book by going to www.johnsmales.com. S M A I L E S dot com dot A U for Australia. And it's a pleasant read and it's a quick read and it's a cheap read and it's a good stocking stuffer. How's that for a commercial? Alright. Next up, Dave Argebright. He always has something. This is his latest book, Life with Luke. It's a story of Jimmy Sills, who's a hell who was a hell of a sprint car driver for years, and a hell of a guy to, on top of that. And uh, they Life with Luke will be explained when you buy the book and read it. You'll you'll understand what Luke's all about. But uh, Dave has a good way. Jeff Gordon wrote the foreword for it, and Dave has a good way with words. Obviously, won a lot of awards, has published a lot of books. But he gets to the 
he always gets to the heart of, of the driver and what, what made him tick and why he why he went to race. And Sills is just such a delightful guy and it comes out so strong in this book. So how do you get it? Coastal181.com. Life with Luke. That's how you get it. Alright. Now we got a calendar here from Mike Lashmet who runs the Vintage Ace, Vintage Indy Racing Program. You you see all these cars that uh, they were actually they're at Road America this year. They're always at Gateway. All the old Indy cars that have been restored. So they put a calendar together every year. There's Dr. Dix and the copy of Old Calhoun Parnelli's car, and and just you know they, they get some really cool cars and they do, they do a nice job. And Mike spends every waking hour, 365 days a year, working on these things, putting these shows together, trying to get as many people involved as possible. So you go to vintageindyregistry.com to buy this latest calendar for 2021 and hopefully we'll get to use this calendar in 2021 to actually watch some racing. Now, another new readout on Coastal181.com is Jay Gersh's book on John Andretti and it just chronicles John's rise to the top of racing, uh, what a pleasant personality can do for you, if you knowing how to treat people, great family guy, uh, and, and, and you know, when he was dying, uh, the strength that he showed and the courage that he showed, probably even more courage. Uh, he had more courage the last year and a half when I talked to him when he was dying than he did in a race car. And, and he just faced it. He was so brave and he faced it and he didn't. And he still did his all his charity work here in Indianapolis. Uh, and I, and Jade, Jade's done a really good job. Of course, he wrote the Beast book. and. And uh, John really op opened up and, and told him his story, and, and it's Coastal181.com, and it's definitely something that, uh, if you're a race fan, you'll want to check it out. I just didn't have a copy of it, so we had to go to the computer. So, what else do we have? Well, last but not least, our buddy Ron Nelson has come up with a book called A Photo Pass to the Amazing 60s. It's all his black and white pictures from Elkhart Lake and the Midwest, Indy cars and sports cars, if you're familiar with his work. Uh, you go to Facebook every day. He's always posting these great pictures. Well, his book's going to be published. Eventually, you'll be able to get it on Amazon. But right now, you can go to Ron at Elkhart Lake Racing Museum com and get a photo pass of the Amazing Sixties. That's how you get Ron Nelson's book. Okay, Abby Gurney's working hard to finish her very first version. Dan Gurney's gonna. It's going to be two. His his life is going to be documented in two books. One is going to be as his driving career, the other is going to be as his owner and designer of the Eagles. And she's working hard to get the first one done by maybe midsummer. Uh, by next year at Christmas, Bones Borsier will have his book done on, Mar on uh, Sammy Swindell, which we're all looking forward to. And Rick Schaefer's got his book done on this, on this great look at Indy, this uh, 500 different things about the Indianapolis 500 that you might not know that's very interesting. It's going to be out soon. It'll be on Coastal 181 as well. All right, you guys have a good Christmas. Uh, stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for reading and watching Racer.com.